This year is a very big year. The game releases might look a little slim, and there's a big question mark over the end of the year, but we do know that we're definitely getting two brand new console releases. Normally, information about these new consoles would be very sparse up until E3 of the year of the console's release. But because of the dwindling significance of E3 and the seemingly lack of competition between these companies, they seem perfectly fine spilling the beans early. There's a lot of information out there, but some of it is speculation being regurgitated as fact. And I had nothing better to do, so I decided to collect all the information that we know for sure and leave some question marks in there for the end. I know that this might sound stupid and obvious, but it'll make more sense later on. We now know that you'll at least be able to buy two physical hardware units. There might be more to the next generation ecosystem, but you will at the very least be able to purchase a physical hardware unit, just like it's the olden days. We'll start with the PlayStation 5, which we now know is called the PlayStation 5. We also got this super cool new logo for it. Look, at this point, I'll just take any information I can get and be perfectly happy with it. Sony also announced that it will be coming out later this year. So that's not speculation. That's a cold, hard fact. Based on the previous PlayStation launches, we can speculate that it'll probably come out sometime around November. Godfall was the first game that I remember hearing being announced for the PlayStation 5, and Gearbox set their release window for holiday 2020, providing evidence of that launch window before Sony even announced it. Outriders, a co-op shooter by developer People Can Fly, is also slated to release in the same launch window. It is rumored that a Gran Turismo game is in the works for the PlayStation 5, and a supposed leak has it slated for November 20th as a launch title, meaning that the PlayStation 5 will be launching on November 20th. But this is just a rumor. There are no confirmed dates, and Gran Turismo always takes forever to come out, so I wouldn't hold my breath on this one. Sony revealed hardware specs in April of last year, which is super early for any kind of information on a new game console. But we now know that its processor will be based on an AMD Ryzen 8 core. Its GPU will be a Radeon Navi. We have no idea how many teraflops it could flop. Based on previous Navi models, it could be literally anything. It will support 8K resolution in some capacity. I'm gonna call bullshit on this one. Games are having a hard time running at 4K 60 frames per second right now, so I'd be surprised if any games actually capitalize on this. At least not at launch, maybe way later. Plus, do you know anybody who owns an 8K TV? Because I sure don't. But this 8K capability means that the HDMI port needs to at least be HDMI 2.0 to support 8K at 30 frames per second, or HDMI 2.1 to support 8K up to 60 frames per second. HDMI 2.1 is super new, so I think it'd be unlikely that we see it in the PlayStation 5. This boost in resolution also means that we could get a boost in frame rate. 120 frames per second would be possible. It would only be 1080p if we get HDMI 2.0, but it'll be up to 4K 120 frames per second if we get HDMI 2.1. So cross your fingers for that. Of course, then the games have to support it, so I'm sure every game is going to be different. Just be happy if you get a game that could run 4K 60 frames per second. That's already a huge milestone. Perhaps most interesting is that this is going to have a solid state drive instead of a hard disk drive like the current generation consoles have. It might also drive the price up a little bit, but it's necessary for faster load times, especially when we're talking about these high resolution assets. Mark Cerny did a closed doors demonstration for Wired using Spider-Man, showing just how much faster using an SSD is on the new PS5 versus the PS4's hard drive. It's about 14 seconds faster. And it's worth mentioning, it's not enough to just slap an SSD in there. Sony is using this as sort of a foundation for the system. The SSD is gonna work together with the other hardware to be as fast as possible. You can slap an SSD in your current PS4 and it will be faster, but the PS5 will be better optimized for it. 
Mark Cerny also seemed very excited about the PS5's ray tracing support. This is a technique used to render lighting. The Navi GPU will make this possible on a PlayStation for the very first time. The PS5 will have a disk drive, which is a thing that I have to clarify now. It'll play 100 gigabyte Blu-ray discs. The current PS4, by comparison, uses 50 gigabyte dual layer Blu-ray discs for its games. So these physical discs will be twice the capacity, meaning that the games might also be twice the capacity. Just imagine how big those updates are gonna be. We also know that the controller will be USB-C, which kind of fits the trend of each PlayStation moving up the world of USB. It will have haptic feedback, which I guess is kind of similar to how the Xbox One controller has rumble in the triggers, or maybe it could be like an HD rumble situation. It will also feature adaptive triggers, which means that developers can set the resistance that you feel when you're pressing down on the L2 and R2 buttons. There is a controller patent that leaked that shows that there might be a microphone in the PlayStation 5 controller, which I think is a much better place for a microphone than in the PlayStation Eye camera. I don't need the console defaulting to the camera microphone every time I'm trying to play Call of Duty, so everybody hears the whole room. Sony also recently released this controller adapter for the DualShock 4 that adds two additional buttons to the back of the controller. This seems like a precursor to what we'll see in a DualShock 5. There's also another patent that shows back buttons on the controller. Patents aren't necessarily indicative of the final product, it just means that Sony is at least considering it as an option. But I think that it's a pretty safe bet. I also think we'll probably see some other weird bullshit that developers aren't gonna use, like this generation's version of the touch bar. The PlayStation 5 will be backwards compatible with almost all PlayStation 4 games, which is kind of what they said about the Xbox One and the Xbox 360. It has yet to be said whether or not the PlayStation 5 will be backwards compatible with PlayStation 1, 2, or 3 games. I think that's what PlayStation Now is gonna be used for, or whatever they end up turning that into. A recent leak pins the price at $450. Bloomberg did a report saying that the hardware is gonna cost $450 to manufacture. It's not uncommon for console manufacturers to take a loss on the initial hardware sales in hopes that they'll get a lot of software sales and subscription sales. So $500 actually makes a lot of sense. It looks like they would be in the green that way, but Let's not forget the cost of R&D, which would probably make them just break even again. We also have no idea what the PS5 is going to look like. We know it will not look like this. That is very clearly a dev kit. Sony says we'll be hearing more about it in the months leading up to release. So we'll probably be hearing about it sometime around E3, even though Sony will not be at E3. Good for you guys. I think it's pretty safe to say they'll have their own announcement sometime around E3. They just won't be physically there at the convention, so stay tuned for more information sometime around then. Despite the fact that we actually know what the Xbox Series X is gonna look like, I actually think that we know less about the Xbox Series X than we do about the PlayStation 5. Microsoft's plans just seem a little bit muddier. It looks like a subwoofer. It's probably smaller than you expect it to be. Judging by the size of the CD drives, it will probably be slightly bigger than two CD drives stacked together. It's a weird shape, but this shape is probably indicative of how much like a gaming PC this console is gonna be. It's also launching Holidays 2020, and you will be able to play Halo Infinite, Hellblade 2, and Outriders on it this year. There's also a bunch of other games, but I have a feeling all of those are also gonna have Xbox One versions because they're from major publishers. Xbox Series X is also going to be using AMD hardware. It will be twice as powerful as the Xbox One X, which is already pretty powerful. It will be capable of 120 frames per second, but it's yet to be said whether or not that will be at 1080p or at 4K. And it has, again, the potential for 8K resolution. Everything we said about the PS5's HDMI port applies here too. So we would need HDMI 2.1 in order to see 8K at 60 frames per second. However, it seems like Phil Spencer seems to be harping on that 4K 60 number. So it looks like we're probably more likely gonna be seeing HDMI 2.0.
It will have GDDR RAM, which is usually reserved for graphics cards. It will also have an SSD and support ray tracing. It looks like the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 are gonna have very similar hardware specifications, which would be fantastic for developers. But we don't know exactly what hardware is gonna be in the Xbox Series X. We don't know exactly what type of CPU or GPU it will be. But either way, both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are gonna have very specialized versions of those CPUs and GPUs, so I guess we really don't know about either of them. We do know that the Xbox Series X will be compatible with some Xbox One accessories, like, for example, the Elite 2 controller. The controller for the Series X looks pretty much identical to an Xbox One controller, but with the D-pad of an Elite controller. It has yet to be determined whether or not that D-pad can morph like it can on the Elite controller. I think the Xbox One had a great D-pad. I'm not sure why of all things this had to change, but I guess you could probably just use a regular Xbox One controller if you don't like it, assuming that's one of the accessories that will work. And if the Elite 2 controller can work, I don't see why not. There's a leaked picture of what the back of the console might look like. There's really nothing too exciting here. Power, Ethernet, two USB ports, and optical audio out that hardly anyone will use, but hey, it's cool that it's there. And this weird horizontal port that seems to be some sort of development or diagnostic tool. So that probably won't make it to the final version. It also has the Kingston hole for locking it to a desk. In case you didn't know what that was there for, now you know. The interesting part about the next generation of Xbox isn't really the physical hardware. It's the ecosystem they're trying to create. They keep alluding to the next Xbox being more of a platform than a physical console. Right now, pretty much all Xbox exclusives can be played on PC. Halo Infinite will also be playable on PC at launch, which is a huge step for Microsoft. None of the other Halos were like that. Xbox Game Studio head Matt Booty <clears throat> says that the current Xbox consoles will live alongside the next generation. Now, this is something that console manufacturers always say and never mean, but Microsoft seems to have a lot of quotes that point towards players being able to play games wherever they want. When Series X launches, there will still be the Xbox One S out there. There will still be the Xbox One X, and we really need to approach that family of devices the same way we approach PC. Content scales to meet the device. I think that's gonna be the case for everybody. We will absolutely lean in on the power of Series X. We think it's gonna be the best way to play and it will be the best thing you can put in your living room. But we also wanna understand that there will be a family of Xbox devices out there. Phil Spencer said, our goal for our first party games is that your entitlements will be cross generation and your achievements will move effectively with your saved game because that's where they stand. I genuinely think that Microsoft doesn't care where you purchase their games as long as you're purchasing their games. There was also rumor of a cheaper streaming only next generation Xbox. And I believe this. I think that something like Project X Cloud will be what allows a streaming only next generation console to work. And maybe Project X Cloud can also work on an Xbox One X or Xbox One S to be able to play Xbox Series X games. These names are getting ridiculous. I think the Xbox Series X name is also more evidence that this is more of a platform and we might see more versions of the Xbox sooner than we think, like an Xbox Series Y, an Xbox Series Z. But knowing them, it's probably gonna be an even dumber name like the Xbox Series 362. Hyper, Ultra, HD, Remix, Alpha. I believe that this is why Microsoft and Sony aren't being so secretive about their next generation plans. They know that they're in completely different spaces. Sony is tackling the hardware market while Xbox seems to be more focused on the services market. But this whole service-based next generation Xbox situation is just speculation. It has yet to be confirmed. What we know for sure is that we're at least getting one dedicated physical hardware unit. Again, I'd expect to hear more about the Xbox Series X around E3 time. I'm still not even sure if Microsoft's gonna be at E3, but they're gonna be next to it probably at the Microsoft Theater. 
And look, man, that's about all the time that I have to dedicate to this. I could sit here and speculate for hours, but that's not gonna get us anywhere. It's not gonna get us any closer to some cold hard facts. So what do you guys think about these next generation consoles? We're talking about the PS5 and the Xbox One. No, no, Series X. They don't make this easy for us. What are the important questions that you have that are left unanswered? I think the biggest one is, what the hell are the launch titles gonna be? That's probably the most important thing that I wanna know. What's gonna be my game when I get this thing? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, and any and all of this other social media garbage. I know that Halo is gonna be it. We got new videos and live streams all the time. Our schedule is usually in a pin tweet over on Twitter. We got Wolf Den Live every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. That's our live podcast where we chat and largely speculate about stuff like this. We have more time there to do that. And we got streams over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. Turn on notifications so you know when I go live. And I have another channel. It's called youtube.com slash bobwolf. There's not much on there now, but I'm gonna be posting a video sometime very soon. It's just like an office slash apartment tour. So you just subscribe there because you might wanna see that. But of course, the most important thing that you can do and the easiest thing is just subscribe to this channel. That's it. And share this video with a friend, a friend that maybe needs to separate the facts from speculation or just somebody that gets hyped up whenever they hear new information about the next generation consoles. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week.